Illustrations by Pete. Everything is done for the day, and I can just draw. What am I going to do? No. 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 Well, this is pretty interesting. The shoulder bone is connected to the hip bone, apparently. No. No. He said what? Oh, that's it. What am I going to do? Oh. I got it. I know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm ready to go. That was way more fun than it probably should have been. I had a blast recording that. I probably... Um, that was a whole day of shooting that was broken down into like a minute and 30 seconds or something like that. Uh, but it was fun. I really had a fun time putting that together. Uh, so I got this black Stonehenge Aqua paper. And I've been wanting this for a very long time. I haven't had it. And you'll see on the back here, this page is the actually the way it's supposed to look. It, it, see that iridescent glow that it has to it? That's because I put down some Thalo Blue uh, green shade over the top of the whole page. And this is something that I did in another video. And I'll link that uh, down below. But... It's a cool little thing where you just cover it with transparent watercolor and then when you put white gouache on it, it brings out that color into the white gouache and you'll see it on the next little side. You see a little bit towards the bottom there, but you'll really see it in the next, yeah, this part right here that I'm going to do. And uh, this was one of the most fun videos that I've ever done and one of the most fun paintings that I've done in a very long time. You see that blue start to come up into the white gouache. That's because the white was watered down a little bit, so that it picks up that blue. It, it's a really cool technique. But here's what I'm going to do. I, I've never done a just a full-on painting like this and tried to uh, let it go for the whole video and just do real time. I don't think I've ever done. Maybe I have. I, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever done real time before. But this one was really fun, and I wanted you to see the process of how I did it and how I made a couple of different mistakes, and then I just corrected them. And for the most part, I used white gouache with watercolor. Now, this one here, this red right here, this was done with actual red gouache. Um, but the, most of the coloring that you see here, uh, I'll put a little bit of, uh, like right here, I'm putting down some extra thalo blue. Um, watercolor and so that, that's what I'll do I'll use some extra watercolor and then just white gouache and tone it and um, it, it was fun it makes it you can see it makes it kind of three-dimensional the way that it works out because of the dark space that's automatically in there as the paint waters out it gets darker and darker so it makes its own shape it, it's very very fun to try if you've never tried it before I will encourage you to try this It is very fun so this was uh I, I wanted i wanted to express that you can be inspired by just about anything and one of the biggest inspirations for art for me is nature i love to go outside and just look at stuff and then put them together now i happen to combine this this is almost like a combination of like an anatomical drawing but of like a flower uh, kind of if a flower was a muscle growing I don't know you'll see but I just I love getting inspired by the shapes and textures in nature and that's all that really was in the beginning <laughs> and I, 
like I said, I had way too much fun with that. So, okay, here's what I really want to talk about today. Um, and I'll, I'll try and refer back to what I'm doing. So if there's any questions, just let me know below and I'll, I'll try and answer that as best as I can. But uh, I want to focus on, um, you know, I, I want you to think about this. Think about the first time you tried to paint and draw and you messed it up. So this is what stops a lot of artists from creating. They they put so much pressure in the moment that they're in. And think back to that first mistake. I don't care if it was a year ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, how long you've been creating art. Think about that mistake you made back then, that first mistake. Are you still angry about it? Are you still angry that that flower didn't look like a flower or the dog didn't look like a dog or the house didn't look like it was a, it was a house. Maybe it looked like it was falling down. I've done a couple of those. Do you still get upset about it? I don't. So why should you get upset about it today? Put your pen on the paper, put your brush on the canvas and just go nuts. Because in a year from now, or in 10 years from now, you will not care about the mistake you made today. Stop letting the uncertainty cancel your creativity. And I think a lot of artists do that. I know sometimes I do that. I try not to. I try to remind myself of this. It's okay if I make a mistake on this painting. Because in 10 years, it really won't matter. I, I won't still be angry about it. Um, but and, and I know... Let's say you have 20 or 40 more years to create. You need to get on with it. You don't have time to worry about a, a little mistake that you're going to make today. Because if, if, if I don't create something today, I will regret it. I, I know I will. Because that's how I move forward in my progress. I create something today. Sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I don't. But that's where the progress happens. If I don't create today, if I'm too scared to make that mistake, if I'm too scared to do something wrong, then I will never, I will never progress. And, you know, I, back in 2015, I think it was, the reason that I started Instagram was because I was afraid to start YouTube. I, I didn't think that I had the right, I didn't think I had any skill. I didn't think that I had enough talent or skill developed or the right, I don't know, the right equipment to take photos. And as a matter of fact, I did record a video back then, but it came out like garbage because the video camera I had actually did was horrible. But I could have fixed that with a little bit of correct lighting. It was my fault. I could have I could have just kept going and made that mistake. Where would I be today if I would have started recording in 2015? Probably a lot further along my goal list. But I didn't. I, I got scared. And I didn't do it. And then two years ago, well, now it's a little bit more than that. Um, yeah, it was, it was more than two years ago. It was probably two and a half years ago. But I recorded three videos and I put them up and then life got busy and I didn't make time for what my passion was. I, I was too busy and I regret again, not moving forward. And when I say I got too busy, what I mean was I got too busy to really stop. I'm one of those people that if I'm going to do something, I study it and study it and study it so that when I do it, it's good from day one. Unfortunately, that doesn't always happen with YouTube because you never really experience the problems and the issues you're gonna have with it until you do it. So I made three videos, I put them up and I said, you know, these took me so long to record. Instead of trying to figure out a better way to do things, a quicker way that was better for me, I just gave up and I didn't do it. And that was on me. I gave up. 
And I don't want people to do that with art. It doesn't make time for for what you're passionate about doing. Make time for it because a couple of years go by and you regret not moving forward. And the time this last six seven months I've been doing this has been I, I've I've loved it. I love doing these videos. I, I love hearing from you guys and um, I, I just love sharing with you. And sometimes people write things that blow me away you know someone writes in uh, a comment that they needed the video that I put out not because I'm great it's just was something they needed to hear uh, maybe they wanted to, they needed to hear that it was okay to start again it's okay to go forward when you haven't been in art for so long or, or maybe it was something that um, maybe I made something look easier than they thought it was and they thought that they could do it because I did it and that's great because I'll tell you what if I can do it everybody can do it I really I throw out more stuff than most people try to do and it's just because I, I don't it doesn't affect me I don't I don't care when I create something I try and always keep it in my mind that all it is is a stepping stone and uh, I hope that when you watch my videos, I hope that comes across. Um, as a matter of fact, I have some very ugly videos that I will put up eventually. Um, they're just, they're ugly pieces of art, but I want people to know that it's okay. Not that I haven't posted ugly pieces of art before. <laughs> uh, I'm not delusional by any means. I understand that, uh, number one, my art isn't for everybody. And second of all, that sometimes the stuff that even would be for other people is not. It's, it's not always the best stuff. Uh, this happens to be one of my favorite paintings that I've ever done. And I'm so glad that it worked out that way because I've been wanting to try this paper for so long. I've been wanting to try this technique on this paper for so long. And I just, I love the way that it came out. But um, here's, uh, let me get back to my original thought. And that is, um, would, you know, if I didn't create every day, I would always think, and in relation to this painting that I'm doing now, what if... I didn't create that day and that was the thing that was going to break me through to the next stage of where I was in art. You know, what What if I, what if that was my breakthrough day? I was going to break through a wall that I realized something. That's what happened for me in this painting. If I didn't do it, if I was scared and said, oh, I got this new art supply, I got this new paper, and it's the first time I'm trying this, I'm opening it up, this is the first page in this pad, and I was too afraid to create this painting, I I would regret it. I absolutely love this painting. So it, it helped me and not not really break through anything I wasn't stuck anywhere but it helped me discover something that I can do that I love to do it was it helped me further my passion for art in creating something and I would have regretted not creating this so I don't want you to not create it's really not worth it and um I know that if I create something even if it wasn't the one, it's not the thing. Um, look, I'm, I'm not looking at things I've created that I don't like. I'm really focused on the things that I do that I do like. And I'm focused on beautiful things that I've been able to create that I would have never done if I was just too afraid to, to get going. Too, too afraid to try something new. Too afraid to... If I didn't want anybody to see this... No one would have to see it. I could crumple it up and throw it away. I could put it in a book and never show it to anybody. It, it, it doesn't matter how it came out. And I know I talk about that a lot, but I think it's very important. I think everybody needs to just stop getting inside their own head and just create art. Do something new. Do something that you never thought would be fun with art 
And then you do it, and sometimes you find out it was amazing. Now, for me, I had built this up in my head. I thought this was going to be a great paper to work on and try this technique, and it was going to come out great. And so I built it up. If, there, if I would have failed at this, it's okay. It, it still wouldn't have deterred me. I would have tried again because it would have been the stepping stone for me to go further. Now, it's not, here's what I want to relate this to. It's not pretty to put your socks on every day, right? Putting your socks on doesn't pay your bills, but it's a necessary step in getting to the job that does pay your bills. That's what art is. It's just a series of doing certain things until you get to the payout. And the payout is when you find something that you've done that you actually feel good about. You can look at it and say, I created this. It was it was pretty good to me. It was it was it was fun for me. It was a great experience. It's something that I created that I'm proud of. And you can move forward, and say, maybe I'm gonna create more of these. And for me, I'm definitely gonna create more of these. I absolutely love them. But it's just something you can do. It's just a way to think about it. That's all it is. Now it may sound counterintuitive, but I wanna also say that you don't even need to believe in yourself. Just create something and move on. You don't have to believe that you can create something amazing. But you may surprise yourself when you do. When I first got back into art, I was drawing comic book characters. And out of nowhere, um, I decided to draw a comic book character that I didn't really think I could do. I didn't think I could do it on my own. I didn't think I could do it without tracing it. And I freehand this character and it came out terribly. <laughs> but but when I really looked at it and uh, sketched it, sketched over it and, and did it again, what I ended up with was something that looked decent. It looked pretty good and it made me think after all these years coming back to art, if I can do this, can you imagine what I can do in a couple of years? If I just keep working at it. And so because I had a couple of years in my view and not today, I was able to just keep going. And I made one crappy drawing after the next. And they were terrible. They were not good. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'd do something and I'd say, wow, that was pretty good. And it gave me a little bit of inspiration. But my, my drawings, my paintings, they were not good. Matter of fact, a lot of them are on my Instagram feed. So if you want to go there and check out some of my early stuff, they just, they weren't good. It didn't matter. It, it brings me to where I am. I'm not even doing the same thing. But it was my journey. It's, it's the path I took. And I knew that I'd be happy with some things I was doing years down the road and that's why I did it and I think that's why a lot of artists stop being artists because they just they either they don't have the patience they don't they can't wait so they don't have the patience to progress and in a couple of years see their progress they'll be able to look back but you can't you have to be able to to visualize that you need to be able to visualize looking back and saying I did something that was really cool. I did something great, but to get there, I did a lot of things that I, 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 they're just garbage. I think it's important for artists to think about that. I want to encourage you to always move forward in art because um, it's fun, but it's also, you can appreciate hard work over years, especially even if it's not your main thing. You have another job. This is not how you pay your bills. This is just what you're doing. This is your hobby. This is for you. And that that's actually a little bit easier because you don't have to show anybody. You can just, you just pack it away in a little book somewhere and, and that's it. It's just for you. So you can look back in a couple of years and say, wow, I'm doing this now and this is what I used to do. That, that, that's one thing that um, is really interesting with sketchbooks for me because 
I have a lot of different sketchbooks, and it's only because I, I start one and I say, yeah, I don't really like this aspect of the sketchbook, I don't like this aspect, so I look for another sketchbook before I've even gotten halfway through that book. So I have a lot of sketchbooks. But when I finally finish one, I might have five years worth of drawings in there. And um, that's not recently. Recently I've been sticking with some sketchbooks recently, but in the past when I've done things, it's always been in multiple sketchbooks or multiple different kinds of paper and canvas and other things and boards and who knows what. But I can look back and say, wow, this is this goes from when I couldn't even draw a straight line, at which I still can't draw a straight line. If you'll notice when I draw things, they, they're never straight. But I went from where I could barely draw anything in the same book to the end of the book being so happy with the with the last couple pieces that are in that book because I've just it's been years since I started it so I kind of like a kind of like a time warp for myself I can just flip back a couple of pages and see what I was doing the couple of years before so it's encouraging for me you know my my view is of uh, 10 years from now I, I have I, I'm in my 40s my early 40s and hopefully, I will have another 40 years that I'll be able to draw, 50 years if I'm lucky, that I can keep drawing. So I'm not worried about what I'm doing and the mistakes I'm making today. Because they're not important to me. They're not my end goal. My end goal is the last painting that I do. And um, if, if you love what you're creating today great that that's amazing that's wonderful and get better experiment a little bit do some other things but if you don't it doesn't matter because this is not the last thing you're going to create you're going to create hundreds or thousands more so don't worry about the thing that you just messed up five minutes ago ten minutes ago five days ago I don't even remember the mistake that I made last month. And I know I did make a mistake because almost every drawing that I do or painting that I do, there's a mistake in it. There's something that I didn't want to be there. But it, it's okay. I don't remember them. I don't focus on them. I look at what the positive side, what did I create? And how does that help me move on to the next thing I'm going to create? This video is not the last video I'm going to make for YouTube. So if I mess something up, which I probably will, I usually stumble over words and spit on the microphone or whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever I do, I am uh, I'm going to create another one. So this, uh, I'm going to make it as best as I can, but I'm not going to stress out about it. And if I mess something up, it's okay. Very rarely... Uh, you know, unless you do something tremendously terrible, most people don't remember all your mistakes. You know, they remember, when you look at um, maybe a baseball player, they look at the home run record of a baseball player and say, that person was amazing. They don't say, yeah, but do you remember the game when he, you know, got out three times in a row or, you know, struck out and then, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Those things don't matter. The highlights are what they point out. And your highlights, let me tell you, if if you just work towards, if you keep going, the highlights, what you're good at, and you focus on that, let's say on a scale of 1 to 10, you can go from, you're, you're a 7 now, and you do it well. You can get to a 10 in the next 20 years. People will line up around the corner for a 10. You know, they, they don't remember, oh, this thing you're not good at, and you've only ever gotten to a 5. So what? Because the thing that you're going to be remembered for is the thing that you're a 10 in. But you have to keep going. You can't stop at a 7 and say, I can't, I don't want to go, keep going because I'm afraid I'm going to mess something up today. I don't know what that is with artists. They put so much pressure on today what I'm creating right at this moment what am I going to put in that first page of my sketchbook 
What am I going to do on this blank piece of paper that's in front of me right now? Don't focus on that. Focus on what you're going to put on the piece of paper in 10 years. Because you're not even going to remember if you messed up something today. It doesn't matter anymore. So you have to look at the long game for art. It's definitely something that develops over time. No one starts out being great. No one does. I don't care what they told you. And let me tell you, I know some people that tell me some doozies. They tell me all about... How, uh, <laughs> I gotta share this. So I know someone who has shared with me that when they were younger, their parents uh, put them in a pig pen when they were two years old. And they saw their neighbor fall down in a seizure close to a fire and they climbed out of two years old keep in mind um, climbed out of the pig pen went two miles down the road to the nearest neighbor knocked on their door and got them to come and call the ambulance at two now obviously that person is lying but people will say things that they are great back then let me tell you, no one is great when they first start. No one is great in the beginning. And sometimes because of either bad instruction, uh, poor, uh, poor time management, poor anything, they cannot be good for a long time. But if you keep going, eventually something clicks. You find that thing. You know, you find your spot. You find where you're good. And if you can find that thing and exploit it, you can be a great artist. Uh, I know, I know people that were, um, you know, the, the soccer moms, and and I use that term very loosely. I don't think any of their kids played soccer, but uh, a mom with a lot of kids in school and running around constantly, and all they had was a sketchbook with a pencil. But if you flip through that thing, because they did it for so long while they were waiting in the car at a practice, while they were uh, waiting in a car while someone was going, you know, dropping off a friend or waiting for friends to come out and picking everybody up, they'd pull out their sketchbook and draw. And that pad, that sketchbook is amazing. The work in there could, I, I can't replicate it. Because they just kept doing it and it was just for them. They weren't trying to make become a professional artist, make money at it. They weren't trying to do that. They just did it for them. But anybody can do that. Start keeping a sketchbook. Just bring it around with you wherever you go. And and I know this is kind of weird because I, I actually don't uh, go around when I'm around people and sketch. So if I'm going with family or going with friends, I usually don't bring a book because I think that's the same thing as you just sitting there on your phone while you're talking to so while someone's talking to you. It, it's just rude to be so, cause I laser in, I don't understand anything happening around me when I'm doing art and I'm drawing and painting. I can't have a conversation with someone. I, this is my alone time. This is my me time the, I'm in my zone here. So it's best for me to be alone when I'm doing this stuff. But, um, now, if you're in a sketcher group or something like that, so there's a lot of urban sketcher group, whatever, that's different. Then everybody's in their own zone, and then every once in a while you just look up and say, oh, yeah, hey, I didn't even see you there. Whatever, that's fine. But if you're around other people, I don't. I don't. You do whatever you want. But if you're not, if you're just sitting, waiting for a store to open, have that sketchbook in your car with just a pencil. Doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be anything fancy or a pen, whatever you got in your pocket. And and draw. Just do something towards your goal. And then when you really have the time to sit down and, and do a full painting, you can do it. Well, I am rambling more so than ever before. Um this is a long video and I appreciate your patience. If you have stuck out to the end here, uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate you watching this and, and going through this. This 
again, I just want to say this technique was really fun. I'm going to do a lot more of these in the future. Um, there's just something about it. I And I do. I like that dark space. And I love how those shadows kind of create form on the thing I'm painting. It looks like certain things are rounded or certain things are cupped or certain things are cut or it just it looks makes it look great. So this this chair is a little squeak. I hope you haven't been hearing that the whole time. I just noticed it as I was moving around that it's it's really loud and I, I, I probably can't talk over it. So I hope you're not hearing that as I'm moving around because I, I get animated when I talk. You know, it's that Italian blood. I just I just start swinging my arms while I'm talking, even though no one's around me. I'm, I'm just swinging my arms to myself. So anyway, there are no secrets to art. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of people selling courses and videos and books and all sorts of stuff. The, the secret to this, there's no secrets about art. There may be a different way of doing things. There's no secret. You got to put the time in. So... I don't, I don't know. I don't ever say, oh, I'm going to go practice my art. I never say that. But that's really what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I think of it as, oh, I'm going to go paint. Or I'm going to go draw. I'm going to go do something like that. But that's what it is. You're, you're creating something. And it's really practice for the future. That's, that's what you're doing. I, I probably repeated myself way too much. I'm sorry. I do that a lot. I don't know what that is. I feel like I want to get my point, my yeah, just my point across, and I just, I start rambling and repeating myself over and over and over. I'm sorry if I do that. I'm sure that's annoying. Sometimes that's annoying to myself. And sometimes the best way to encourage yourself is to find some other people that are kind of on the same path or doing the same thing, or just that appreciate what you're doing. And they can encourage you and not lie to you, not tell you something is great when it obviously is not, but... Um, just, just someone, to, Hey, I noticed your improvement. Sometimes that's more important than anything. When someone tells me that, when they say, Hey, Hey, that thing you just did here. Yeah. Last time you did something like that, this one's much better. Just that helps. They don't even have to say it's good. They, they just, you know, find people that encourage you. And that's what a community is really about. And you, when you have those people that are kind of in the same doing the same thing with the same struggle that you're experiencing and you bond together with them and then you can encourage each other and that's what and and that's what I really wanted this channel to be about I want it to be about encouraging each other to move forward in art because I think it's important I think I think art is very important and in another video I'm gonna probably rant about something that I heard recently but I'm not gonna do that in this one but it's about art being important Art is important, and I and I, I believe that. I, I really think it is. But, um, well, I just want to thank you all so much for watching this video. Um, if, if you have any questions, suggestions, please put them in the comments below. And uh, here's a couple more videos that you may enjoy if you enjoyed this one, although none of them are real-time drawings and or paintings. But you may enjoy them anyway. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.